Hi YouTubers, and welcome to another edition of Fossil News. Where old news is good news. Now, at the end of the last um, Fossil News, I happened to mention that there had been found a new species of sort of hominid ape. Um, and indeed I said I'd do some little talk on it. Uh, it's quite complicated, but I'll try and explain what's been going on in the world of anthropology. Okay, now, Australopithecus sediba, this new species that uh, has been uncovered in South Africa. Um, it dates, and it was found in a cave, but it dates from, and this, <laughs> it's found in a cave, a couple of specimens, okay, a mother and a son. There's also a couple more specimens uh, that I believe are being uncovered. And it's an ongoing research, and these, this publication has recently come out, but it's only preliminary. But, let's get on with it. <coughs> okay, right, so, Australopithecus sediba. Okay, it dates from about 1.95 to 1.78 million years ago. Okay, so, and it's an Australopithecine. Now, what are Australopithecines? Well, they're basically the sort of earlier form of ape that went on to become hominids. That was generally thought of as the consensus when these things were first found, because they fitted in nicely into a, into a sort of a chet, nice little tree, and nice, you could write it in. Oh look, that one, that one, that one, that one. It doesn't really work like that anymore because there's been so many found that you've now got that one, 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 that one. So they sort of, you're finding different developments within the apes at different periods of time. And Australopithecus sediba fits in at the same time as Homo habilis, which was found, the oldest one, around about 2.4 million years ago. So Homo habilis was already about at that time. Homo habilis was generally believed to be the ancestor of Homo erectus. Joke name, love it. Um, but um, it doesn't really work like that. Never has, and people really regret now that they started calling things Australopithecines and started calling them the Homos. Um, because, not well, hominids, because it really confuses things. However, stay with me. Australopithecus sediba, the new one, has basically um, developed and evolved from its earlier ancestors like Australopithecus africanus and, and things like this that date back to about four and a half million years ago and we've skipped now to 1.95 to 1.78 million years ago so they have developed from that early earlier Australopithecines how they developed well for starters their hands uh, in this particular species, has a longer thumb and shorter fingers, so they're about the same size. This would have been very good for tool making um, and obviously the things that we do today. But also, it would still retain some of those uh, uses for climbing trees. Look at the foot of this particular creature, and and you also see that it still retains some of its tree climbing capabilities. But it does have a heel. Um, a heel sort of uh, that I believe is, is to this species unique but but the ankle itself does follow the human pattern um, also uh, looking at the hips of the female we, they haven't really developed that much so the um, they would have still had quite small heads the head size hadn't hadn't developed that large either what they've done though, those clever people, they've taken CAT scans. You know, not just a CAT scan, but you take those sort of x-rays and you fit them all together and you make that computerized sort of brain. Uh, I can't remember what the name is for it. But they've, they've managed to do these scans that show you a picture of, you know, the brain basically taken from the cavity. And what they found is a development of the frontal lobes of this particular creature. The frontal lobe development generally represents it is believed. Um, things like social activities, um, tool making, and um, language. Those, those, sort of, those sort of area, that sort of area uh, that would have been very useful to human development. Not brain size, but certainly the brain capacity. Homo habilis, uh, which was around, I believe, at the same time, did have a larger brain, but 
they haven't really got that sort of information on Homo habilis, so it, at this moment it's not really known. What else do we know? Well, well, what we know is this guy had lots of the developments of modern humans. But also, at the same time, you had Homo habilis, which had probably by then really had its day, but was going on to become, or at least we believe, um, at that point you also have the species Homo erectus. Um, basically living alongside this species. So what was going on in Africa at this time and how can this happen? Well, to me it seems quite logical that there was some sort of ring speciation going on or something very similar. What that basically means is in by the very nature at this time with savannah disappearing um, or savannah coming in and the woodland disappearing I should say, you're going to get this um, and different rainy seasons, wet seasons, they've got to chase water, let's face it, and probably live amongst other animals for survival. So they're going to be migratory to some extent. And the, these um, early hominids were going to be wandering. They're not going to be stuck in one place. They spread across Africa, quite obviously East Africa, quite obviously um, down in West Africa. We have um, plenty of ape species, found in other parts of Africa, they were travelling around, um, obviously subspeciating. And this is thing for the anthropologist to work out. It doesn't really matter that we have two similar species living alongside, in the same way Neanderthal lived alongside the Homo sapiens. They could have still interbred. And this probably happened. Wouldn't surprise me at all. Or a ring speciation that goes on. Um, Ring, speci ring speciation, look it up if you, if, you, um, if you don't know what that is. I haven't really got time to explain that on this particular thing. But the thing is, creationist websites have already hit on it. Yes, they have. Um, I've looked them up, and there, there it is. Anthropologists can't find human ancestor. It's all lies. Um, okay, so they don't know specifically the exact one. And I say this all the time. But it was going on. It was quite obviously going on. And there were plenty of subspeciations going on. Um, they're a bit like Bond villains, aren't they? These these guys. Yeah. So, Mr. Bond, you cannot tell us which of these apes the human ancestor. So, we win by default. <laughs> anyway, let's go straight on to the next one. Otherwise, we won't get anything else done. Right, well, I want to have a look at some dinosaur finds and one of the most impressive dinosaur finds that we find in the last uh, few months, obviously most of these finds weren't done in the last few months, it's the reports on the finds that uh, we're interested in. And this particular uh, specimen, Otto, uh, found in Bavaria, Germany, around about 135 million years old. They claim that this was a sort of a Jurassic dinosaur, but in fact that was more Cretaceous, so the reports are a bit vague. It's certainly around about that Jurassic Cretaceous period of time. During this period of time, of course, uh, at the end of the Jurassic, we had the breakup of the great supercontinent Pangaea. And this continued throughout the Cretaceous, and a lot of diversification went on in uh, these dinosaurs at that time because of their isolation. This is a theropod dinosaur, the ones to which you'll find allosaurs, um, T-Rex, the raptors, uh, all those bipedal type of dinosaurs. Uh, that group is certainly a member of, but as I said, hasn't been classified exactly at the moment or given a full name. So we'll just call him Otto. Um, a wonderful specimen, 98% complete. It's just a juvenile, it was 28 inches long. Or it is 10, 28 inches long. Um, and obviously died very young. But fabulous specimen, looks a bit like Dino out of the, uh, to me he looks a bit like Dino out of the Flintstones, that type of uh, looking dinosaur. But it's not the only find that uh, has been fabulous in the last few weeks for the dinosaurs and I'll get on to the next one in just a moment. Okay let's have a quick look at a major find that we have um, in Mongolia. Uh, Mongolia, the Gobi Desert area. In that area, they have found a nest of dinosaurs, and in this nest of dinosaurs are 15 individual babies, or juveniles if you like, that were living in a nest environment. This particular dinosaur, um, which is Protoceratops andruzi, 
It's um, a well-known dinosaur. There's been lots of finds of it. Um, it looked a bit like the Stegosaurus, but a much smaller version. Didn't have the three horns. Had the frills, um, but it's from a late Cretaceous period, uh, right there towards the end of the dinosaur era. And we know quite a bit about the environment of uh, this area. We know that there were sandstorms, for instance, because so many nests got covered by sandstorms. And this particular nest, this has happened as well. They were buried alive, basically, which was very unfortunate for poor old um, Protoceratops, but very fortunate for paleontologists. In this area, we had uh, a lot of other uh, predatory dinosaurs. The Oviraptors, the Velociraptor um, was another one that was found in this area. A very famous fossil found was of a Protoceratops and a Velociraptor um, in mortal combat, as it were. And they were covered and, and died in this sort of uh, one, I believe, the Velociraptor. Um, it was caught by the beak of this um, Protoceratops and the Velociraptor was kicking away at it. And it was a sort of fight scene. And a famous, famous fossil. Hopefully, I might be able to find a, find a picture of that. Now, the point is, what are they, by finding this particular nest, Protoceratops, with 15 individuals in that nest, babies as well, obviously looked after its young. It had a large amount of young. Um, um, when I say looked after, obviously it couldn't stop stand, sandstorms, but um, a great insight into how these creatures um, bred and, and of course um, reared their young. So um, there have been other uh, discoveries of juveniles, etc., of this species, and there's been hundreds of discoveries of um, Protoceratops, so it's a very well known dinosaur. And it obviously was eaten and uh, attacked by a lot of these other predatory theropod dinosaurs. Anyway, I'm not going to ponder any more on it because I've only just heard about it and it's quite exciting and um, we'll go on to the next one. Okay, let's have a little look at uh, a recent find of a Microraptor gooey. Microraptor gooeys lived about 125 million years ago in what is today China. But the thing about them is, is they were very basic flying feathered dinosaurs. They were not birds as such, but they could fly. They were really too... Um, av to birds, if you like, what the Wright Brothers Kitty Hawk, the very first plane, was to modern aviation. And what is interesting about this recent find, uh, bearing in mind that Microraptor gooeys lived around about um, 25 million years after the discover after Archaeopteryx, which is discovered, lived in the Jurassic around about 150 million years ago. So, uh, but they are basic flying dinosaurs. What's this one important for, as there have been several found, is the fact that in uh, the stomach area of this particular find is the remains of its last meal. And its last meal was an avian dinosaur, or a bird, if you like. Uh, Microraptor gooeys were only about 12 inches long. That's a male 12 inches, isn't it? Yes, and... Um, but this uh, small beak and remnants of the last meal shows that these creatures uh, lived on birds. And uh, also, obviously, an arboreal lifestyle, as indeed the birds had. So, uh, interesting find. Um, I'm going to skip straight on from it, because that's all I can tell you about it. And we're going to have a look at whales. OK, in Antarctica, the Weddell Sea area, um, some Argentine and Swedish scientists have discovered the jawbone of the earliest ever fully aquatic whale. Now, the proto-whales uh, lived around about 53 million years ago. This is where we're finding um, those proto-whales in places like Pakistan and India. And it is believed and generally accepted that this is the birthplace of the whales. But this is the earliest one found outside that area, and it was about seven metres long. It was a basilosaur, and it had rather nasty, it was a fierce predator, let's be honest. And um, this particular jawbone that has been found um, corresponds to that exact age. 
Now this is exciting, it means that the um, whales themselves were fully aquatic by that time. And uh, it's a very rapid piece of evolution, 4 million years, but uh, quite acceptable. Also, in Chile, um, on the Pan American Highway, I think it's Route 5 they call it, they were doing a widening of the road and suddenly discovered some whale fossils. Now these whales, um, which have now been looked at and date from around two to three million years ago. Um, at first, it was an interesting find. This is, this is an area sort of on a hill about just over half a mile away from the actual sea. And they found um, up to, well they have found so far around 75 of these whales that all seem to have died together in one particular spot. They're not all the same species but they're mostly baleen whales, uh, baleen whales being things like humpbacks, uh, the, the, obviously the great blue whale. But also there they found a sperm whale and they found an extinct form of dolphin, a dolphin with tusks that, uh, that is known but uh, it's a very good find, an exciting find. Now what happened to these creatures is, is interesting as well. They've all died together in certain place all at the same time in what is now obviously one of the driest areas on earth it's a desert where they are so um, why did these creatures die in such a, in a place it could have been a lagoon it could have been some sort of earthquake that's, that's sealed off the lagoon there, there was some reason for it but it's a whale's graveyard and uh, an exciting find lots of research going on there it's been made a little sort of national monument at the moment or a national project and uh, I'll hope to keep you informed if anything comes up on that. But uh, so, far, so, so far, a mystery. Anyway, I think I've run out of time. I don't really have any other news instantly. And I think that's enough for now. Um, thank you for tuning in. I hope I haven't been too dull. Um, peace for now. And remember, old news is good news.